In the past, I have worked both as a freelance developer on client projects and also in the corporate environment as a regular employed developer. And then the last time I got some strange offers to work with somebody and I want to help you to find the right projects, the right jobs and what to watch out for and take care of when you apply for a new project or job. So let's do this. So first let's talk about the role of a software developer. If you check out like some job postings online, you will notice that some of them, I just looked up a few, I don't know, can the camera focus on this? I guess it can't. They basically have like 10, 15 lines of requirements. You should basically be an Android expert, an iOS expert, um, you should be the Git expert, um, you're the Scrum owner or whatever uh, you're of course a key player a team player uh, you're improving all the workflows and um, you got like five plus years of experience and i know many of you are really scared by postings like these <coughs> and wouldn't apply for this and i was the same but the thing is that most of the companies i don't say all but most of the companies actually put like everything um, they could think of into this single posting. If you miss like three or five of those elements, well, that's not a reason to not submit your CV to that company because you might still be a great fit for that job. I've seen the same in the past. Um, I didn't always match all the criteria, and I was completely upfront with this in the initial interview. Just be open, um, tell that you don't have all the required skills. But if you're an interested person, um, it is not really hard to get knowledge in these areas, either upfront or maybe you start at a lower salary and then move up as you get better. And talking about salary is interesting because when I had my first position, I started also with a like standard income level. But I moved up pretty quickly and during my time there, I'm actually not sure if I can say where I worked, but I guess you could find it out somewhere online anyway. During that time, I noticed that there were people in the in our department that earned like in a range of 20k difference. So let's say like between 40 and 60k. And the people earning 40k, you might assume, are just juniors and the ones with 60k are like the experts. That wasn't actually completely true because some people just sold themselves really, really short. What quality would make you a good sales associate? People, person. And that is one of the biggest problems that I see in interviews. I can't speak for all these software developers, but some of these special people are maybe not so um, confident, that's the word. And so they basically sell themselves short, they accept the first offer and they just go for the job. While I understand that some people just have to earn money and they're happy to get any job, in many cases it is better if you know how to position yourself, how to point out your values, tell the company why you are valuable to it. Maybe you can already show them what you could improve or bring to their technology stack where you could uh, add your previous knowledge. Suddenly the talk goes into a completely different direction and you can definitely then start with a higher salary or agree to something that maybe you earn more after a fixed time. So these income differences I've seen in different companies are definitely not always based on the experience of the developer but more like how they can make a deal with their boss or how they can position themselves or if you can sell yourself in a good way which mm, maybe was one of my skills you're sometimes better off and another thing that I noted or that I always try to keep in mind is that a job interview if you're invited is not just a uh, one directional talk. What do you say we interview you? Uh, all right, yes, that's a uh, sometimes useful exercise. It is not like you just want the money, the job from the company. The company wants something from you as well. So it is more like an exchange. And understanding this also positions you a bit different because you have to understand that the company wants like 40 or I don't know 50 hours of your weekly time. They want to uh, get your knowledge and the experience you have made 
and that has a price. And of course, you should make the research. Um, there's no fixed number, like if you look it up, in San Francisco, the income for a software developer is like twice the amount the developers get in Germany. If you then go to Italy or Spain, uh, it will go down a lot more. It is, of course, different from country to country. But still, if you're in interview, just keep that in mind that you also have the permission to ask things. Uh, are they gonna pay for any education program that you might wanna join? Uh, are they giving you time off to learn something new? Do they have something like a Google Friday? So there are a lot of things that you can ask in this interview and also that you can demand. And if there's a job that is not looking very friendly to you and you don't have to accept it, then guess what? Don't accept it. So these are just a few ideas about interviews. If you're looking for a new job or switching jobs or just getting your first job, keep in mind that you got skills, experiences, that you're a valuable developer to the company and sell yourself in that way. But on another note, let's talk about freelance project because getting your first freelance project can be really scary. Sometimes it's luck. It is something um, that I feared in the beginning, but now it has become pretty usual. But still, there are a few things, uh, a few warning signs that you should take care of. Also, a really quick note, if you want to know more about like getting freelance clients, getting consulting work, um, let me know below. Not that I'm looking for something, but I would love to help you in that area as well. So that would definitely make a great topic for a vlog, you know. Just let me know and then hit the like and subscribe, of course. And recently I got a few requests on uh, Instagram. So let's take a look at a few of them. The first one is a classic example for something uh, that I basically completely deny. If somebody has a great idea for the next killer app, I'm definitely out because chances are very small that this is the next killer app. The next request I got was actually from somebody from Germany, uh, which I saw on the profile, but the request was in English, which was the warning sign number one. Warning sign number two was a pretty bad English, followed by after a few days realizing I'm from Germany and a pretty bad German as well. But of course, I'm not racist or anything, having bad spelling or I just mix up the words sometimes as well. No problem, could be still a great project. The problem in this case was the person had completely 100% predefined uh, Adobe XD uh, designs and just needed somebody to build an app from that design. And at the same time, he wanted two quotes, one for building the app without an API and then building it with an API. And at that point, I also declined the project. Right now, I don't have to accept all the projects and I, for myself, only accept projects that I can really help with, uh, build the API, help them find the idea and shape whatever they want to build. And doing something like this is just a commodity work. So that's what really is called freelancing. And I try to do more like consulting work. So therefore, I also declined this project because my rates would be too high to simply code a design into an Ionic app. If you need the money, of course, that would have been a great project. But for me, the client looked a bit suspicious and the project wasn't really interesting, so I denied. Now this one sounded a bit more interesting. The person had a real idea, or in general, or actually two ideas, but the ideas were pretty big and followed up by, can you give me a quote on If you get like, so I need an app, some login and this functionality for Twitter, and Instagram combined with Facebook, how much will that be? Well, I don't know. The estimation alone for a project like this would have taken me maybe days. I don't know anything more about the project and also it sounds to me a bit like a copy of something that already exists. So I also declined that project as well. Funny enough, a day or so after I declined it, I got another message and at that point I was happy that I had declined this project because the person seemed like he was like a knew it all and there's so much money to make and why don't you work with me? Well, at that point I was really happy I wasn't involved in that project. And to take a look at a bit more positive, some I advised that I try to um, follow uh, before accepting a project or when I accept a project, 
I really like to take on projects that are slightly behind my current knowledge level. So what that means is sometimes, as you might know already, I can sell myself pretty good in interviews. I know a lot of things about different technologies and how they work together, but I'm not super detailed into each of them. But if you have a general idea about it, you can talk about it in the beginning. And then once it comes to a real project, you can work yourself into that technology. And the good thing about this is sometimes the client basically pays for your education. If not, so sometimes I will also just do this upfront and then work on the task. In that case, I also know that the time I invest into learning a technology or something is well spent because I learned something and then I also get money for it. That is a great way to see a project. Alrighty then, that brings us to the end of the video. Let's recap my three tips for you. Number one, know yourself and don't sell yourself short, either in job interviews or when reaching out for a new project. Number two, accept work that is slightly behind your knowledge level, so you know that you learn something new, which is always great. If you get paid for it or not, learning something is definitely a big plus. And number three, which is sometimes hard, but as Im but important as well, have the courage to decline a project and say no. Sometimes we're just behind the money, but if we see that a project is no fit, um, that we can't do it in the time, that it is completely outside of our skills, simply decline a project or work. So what are your ideas about job interviews and freelancing work? Would you like to know more about how I get my clients or what I do and how I started? Just let me know in the video so I can give you some tips and share whatever I did in the beginning. I actually don't remember it anymore, but I will dig it up for you, of course, as always just like my old clip. I'm super excited. And then of course, we have reached the end of the video. I have made it way too long again. I hope you still enjoyed it. Please leave a like, leave the subscription. There's still a very long way to 100K. I don't know uh, if we can make it, but I trust you. So share it with your friends this week. Go out, um, get a new job. No, I can't say that, right? Look out for your first freelancing project and then I will catch you next week, hopefully with the same good mood that I have every week. So, enjoy your week. Happy coding. Simon.